Well, the next tune I'd like to look at is a, it's a song air called Ye Banks and Braes. It's a, a Robert Burns song, um, of which there are about 800. Uh, one of the projects I'm currently working on is a, a 13 CD compilation of every song composed by Robert Burns. And uh, he was a very busy man <laughs> for someone who didn't live to a terribly great age. But this is one of his most uh, beautiful songs. And uh, I'm fortunate enough to get to accompany some great singers uh, in my day-to-day -day job. And uh, Rod Patterson is a, a great singer from Scotland and a, a specialist on the songs of Robert Burns. He's kind of rescued a lot of these songs from the kind of 19th century music hall kind of treatment that uh, certainly I don't think Burns would have intended for, for these songs. But uh, Rod and I were working on a TV show uh, in Aberdeen and uh, Ye Banks and Braes was selected by the producer um, as one of the songs that we should work on. And uh, I'm very glad that we did because uh, we came up with a, a very satisfying arrangement of the song. It's, uh, it's a very short song. There are two verses. And uh, between us, we came up with a, a bridge to go between the verses and to serve as an intro as well. And uh, to suit Rod's voice, we you'll notice we've moved the capo up to the third fret. So we're now playing in the key of F. We're still in drop D tuning. But capoed up three, we're in the key of F major. So this is Ye Banks and Braes of Bonnie Doon. So let's look at that arrangement. Um, as I said in the introduction, it's a, an arrangement of a song air, so naturally it would be sung. So let's isolate the melody. Let's begin by looking at that. And the key to arranging pieces like this, for me anyway, is to hear in my head how a singer would approach the song, in particular Rod Patterson with this one. And again, it's, it's a lot to do with ornamentation. So let's just isolate the melody and then we'll talk about some of the chords. So there's one verse just of the, the bare melody with no accompaniment. You'll notice 
even in that single line melody, there's a lot of vibrato. You use dynamics. Some notes are louder than others. Some notes you hold on to, like that one. That's a big climactic moment in the song, so you have to try and squeeze some kind of uh, emotion out of that particular note. And uh, there's all the rolls and hammer-ons. So let's look at some of the chords. Um, the song is about uh, losing out in love, which is uh, the most common theme of traditional songs, probably any type of song. And uh, it's uh, the man is lamenting the fact that his his lover has betrayed him. So it should be played with a fairly wistful kind of way. So I. Introduce lots of uh, like minor seventh chords. Here, when we go to the, it's a B flat chord. It's like a G shape without the capo. I introduce that, which is a semitone. It's just a a very dissonant noise if you isolate it, but in the context of the piece. It just gives us a, a slightly different color. And there's a major seventh chord. The major chord would be there. And all you're doing is Flattening the octave by one semitone. Then in the second half of the song where the melody rises up, the actual tune is quite repetitive. So what I've done is introduce this descending semitone figure. So you'll hear those notes. Seems to fit with the, the mood of the song. Listen again. Then then you're almost home. So let's look at the tab, slow it down, and uh, we'll try and play it together.